Hello and thank you for joining me on yet another Food Offensive video broadcast. I just wanted to give you a little bit of uh, intro about myself. If you haven't seen our intro video, you can, you can look at that here um, as well. But uh, just a quick little intro. I, I graduated from the Culinary Institute of America uh, in Hyde Park, New York in 2001. Uh, and I've worked in the food service uh, uh, industry for about 14 years now, going on my 14th. 14th year and I've, um, I've really worked all over. I've worked at an organic and biodynamic uh, bakery and farm in uh, New York and I've worked at their market stand a couple times a month in, green, in the green market in New York uh, City. So I got to travel to the city quite often and, and really just experience that, uh, that, organic, that organic experience and um, milling our own flour and uh, things like that right inside the bakery. So it was a wonderful experience back um, back when I wasn't really into organic food and um, didn't really care as much about it as I do now but I look back and really appreciate that experience and um, I've worked in a top restaurant in Dallas I've worked in a top restaurant in Denver um, and I've been I've lived internationally teaching cooking lessons and just uh, immersing myself in the culture and, and traveling around Asia and immersing myself in the food as well of course and so uh, just adding that experience to my uh, repertoire and uh, and uh, just uh, expounding on that and using that uh, currently using that as well uh, in in my everyday cooking and just invaluable experience and uh, I just want to also before I go on thank thanks to everyone who's subscribed to the YouTube channel uh, all those that have uh, given me feedback and um, just uh, suggestions and comments and and um, just all the various things. I just appreciate that. I appreciate all those that have viewed. We've we've hit about a hundred views now on the videos, and just uh, a wonderful opportunity just to reach out and uh, just share my heart. And that's that's that I want to bring about an action and bring about awareness to what's in our food, um, what are we putting in our bodies, and what um, what is it that's really in the food ingredients and and just educating on that and, and the different uh, things. And so each week we have a couple of top news stories to couple two three four somewhere along those lines and then we do a special report and we've uh, last week kicked off a special series of, of reports on uh, GMOs and we're gonna continue with the second installment of that um, this week uh, after looking at a couple of news stories uh, recent news stories and so uh, we'll get into the GMOs later uh, about what they are uh, where, how, why, what, you know, what products they are. It's not just plants, it's animals too. Uh, the, effects on, the effects on our environment, the health risks, and uh, later on down the road, in several weeks, we'll look at how to read labels, uh, what we can do about it, and what we can do about it, how we can bring about awareness ourselves. After you've learned yourself, then you can go on and, and educate others and maybe show them this video or uh, go online and research and just some of the activism things we can do as well to bring about awareness and to help put that GMO label on food so that way we know that's what we're getting. But before I get into GMO um, about our special report tonight, I want to look at um, a couple of news stories from this week. So, so moving right along um, with this uh, current news, uh, this was from... Um, I'll look at the, the date here in a second, but I'm going to read the title to you. It's Monsanto spends $2 million lobbying the government. Uh, now, Monsanto is a, a GMO company, and they produce seeds uh, that a lot of a uh, majority of our GMO crops are, are used to grow uh, nowadays. And this article is by Jonathan Benson. He's a staff writer for naturalnews.com, and this is from January 6, 2012, so it's a recent article. Um, if you've ever wondered how the biotechnology industry has been able to develop the cozy and unquestioning relationship with the federal government that it has today, you need not look further than big biotech's lobbying expenditures. According to a recent Bloomberg Businessweek report, biotech giant Monsanto spent a whopping $2 million just in the third quarter of 2011 lobbying the federal government to support its agenda. Now according to a disclosure filed by Monsanto on October 18th, the company has been lobbying both Congress and the U.S. Department of Agriculture or the USDA 
uh, to weaken regulatory requirements for both GM sugar beets and alfalfa, which have been a primary focus for the company throughout the past year. Now, Monsanto is also spending millions to ensure that it, its patents on various other GM crops remain in place for years to come. And we'll look more um, about those patents and, and the patents they hold on seeds and the effects that has had um, on, on farmers and things like that. We'll get into that in, in future uh, GMO special reports, but uh, we're going to continue with this article um, uh, from Natural News, Jonathan Benson's article. Uh, and it quotes this, according to OpenSecrets.org, which tracks corporate lobbying practices, Monsanto has spent more than $5.1 million in 2011 lobbying the federal government. In 2010, Monsanto spent over $8 million in 2009, uh, and in 2009, over $8.6 million. Uh, the FDA has not done its job to protect the American people. But we can see that it's incapable of doing so because of Monsanto's uh, deep ties to the administration. Now, Monsanto's largest lobbying year was the year before that, in 2008, when it spent nearly $9 million for bribing the federal government to betray the people. Uh, and that's from uh, naturalnews.com and uh, the whole lobbying thing. And, and it really, um, I believe, connects to some of the other, some of the other stories about uh, and, and particularly this next one, possibly, uh, n n but Monsanto's isn't the only one uh, involved in uh, in this next article. But another company is. But it, but I think the lobbying has a lot to do with uh, this uh, quote, you know, revolving door with with the government and, and the way that things get pushed through, depending on how much money they give them. And and it you know the numbers don't lie there. I think that really reflects. Um, Monsanto's stance uh, and, and where they stand in uh, in our culture now, in our food culture, and in our food supply, uh, the money that they've spent lobbying Congress, and uh, how far they've have, they've become. The ninety percent, like uh, like I've seen um, statistics, ninety percent of uh, GM crops are owned by Monsanto. So uh, moving along to the number. second one, wholesale approval of GM crops. This is. Um, another article um, by the Cornucopia Institute, and, and it also goes on to say in the title, Agent Orange to be used on U.S. farmland. Now that's, that's a scary headline, and we're going to look into that right now. Uh, the wholesale approval of genetically engineered foods, uh, although the Obama administration disappoints and angers the public, and this article uh, was, was published to, uh, January 4th of this year, 2012. Um, and it's from the uh, Cornucopia Institute. Uh, now, over the holidays, the United States Department of Agriculture announced its approval of a novel strain of genetically engineered corn developed by none other than Monsanto, purportedly being drought tolerant, quote, drought tolerant. Despite receiving nearly 45,000 public comment, uh, comments in opposition to this particularly genetically engineered corn, variety and only 23 comments in favor of it. The Obama administration gave Monsanto the green light to release its newest GE corn variety freely into the environment and the American food supply without any governmental oversight or safety tracking. Now, a lot of times they leave, you know, they put these these bills out and put them out uh, for, for public comment, and, and this particular one was, and then they had 45,000 people against it. Despite that, um, they passed this through. Now, you can say what you want, but it, it, it really does give the opportunity to say that that lobbying could have had a lot to do with this. So that's why I put these two articles together, because I think they really connect with each other. And it's no coincidence that they came out in the same week and hit the news. Uh, pretty hard in the in the food and natural news uh, sites. So now Dow AgroSciences, that's another uh, genetically uh, you know genetic modification company. Um, the Dow AgroSciences for corn that has been genetically engineered to better resist the poisonous herbicide 2,4-D. The public can comment on Dow's 2,4-D at uh, regulations.gov, and then it's a long um, a long address with that. You'll see that in the comments section below this video or on the website at foodoffensive.com. 
Now, while the USDA attempts to assure the public that 2,4-D is safe, scientists have raised serious concerns about the safety of this herbicide, which was used as a key ingredient in Agent Orange. That's right. It was used to defoliate forests and cropland in, Vietnam, in the Vietnam War. 2,4-D is a um, chlorophenoxy herbicide and scientists around the world have reported increased cancer risks in association with its use, especially for soft tissue, sarcoma, and malignant lymphoma. So it's uh, some pretty, pretty dangerous stuff. And uh, the research also by the EPA found that babies born in counties with high rates of 2,4-D application to farm fields were significantly more likely to be born with birth defects of the respiratory and circulatory systems, as well as defects of the musculoskeletal system like clubfoot, fused digits, and extra digits. These birth defects were 60 to 90 percent more likely in countries with higher 2,4-D application rates. And it goes further. The results also showed a higher likelihood of birth defects in babies conceived in the spring when the herbicide application rates peak. Now, in its position, uh, pe petition, the Dow AgroSciences states that 2,4-D is increasingly important for chemical farmers because of the presence of weeds that have developed resistance to, glypho uh, to glyphosate as a result of the widespread use of Monsanto's genetically engineered uh, glyphosate-resistant crops. Now, what this does is it creates these super weeds because as the uh, weeds become uh, tolerant, more tolerant to these uh, herbicides, and they, you know, change and become, you know, become tolerant to them. And the same with pests and then the pesticides, and they have to constantly be changing the formulas, and they or they increase the use of them. The farmers would need to dump more on the crops, and then that, of course, leads down into, you know, our bodies, and then down the food supply and into our bodies or or the animals that are eating these crops. So the concern that the use of GE crops or genetically engineered crops, which are resistant to particular herbicides, leads to the creation of super weeds. And that's now shown to be valid and serious, as even the chemical companies uh, now recognize and admit this is a problem, says Castle. Now, Mark A. Castle is the uh, senior farm policy analyst with the Cornucopia Institute. That's where this article's from. Now, if you can take you can take action against this, we still have some time with this one. Citizens can comment on the proposed approval of Dow's 2,4-D tolerant corn and Monsanto's um, steridonic acid soybeans until February two of twenty seven uh, February twenty seventh of two thousand and twelve. And you can go to the online peti uh, petition opposing uh, Dow's corn variety, and, and which will also be sent to President Obama and Secretary Vilsack, and that can be signed. Uh, at the links below. You can look at those links if you want to take action to that. So those are a couple of uh, couple of news articles that are going on right now to bring about uh, an awareness to you know what's going on and, and what we're dealing with and what we're facing. Now the reason why um, I picked those articles of course that they're GMO specific and that's what a series of reports that we've embarked on and we, this is this will be the second installment uh, in this week's video. Um, but GMO, I think, is so important because to cover first because it is impacting our society and, and whether the companies that sell the product, you know, no matter how safe they say they are, there's contradictory reports that say they're not safe. And so we really need to take a serious view on these things. And like we looked at last week uh, with Frito-Lay being uh, the chip company being uh, sued for um, the all-natural claim that they make despite their product having a uh, GMO product in it. And I think it's very important that we do at all, uh, anything possible and raise awareness wherever we can in order to, uh, to uh, hopefully regulate the GMO and, and create labeling. It, it, statistics show that, that people, um, people that if they knew that the GMO was in the food, they wouldn't buy it. And then, and then of course, uh, that would lead down the line and, and we would, we'd be able to say that, um, that as, as those products aren't being sold, those companies selling those products would change their, um, change, change what goes in it and really market it to who's going to buy it. And if the majority of people say no GMO, then 
you better guarantee that people are, uh, you know, that these companies are going to go the way, well, you know, with whatever the pe people will buy, whatever their consumers will buy. We've seen that with other products. You know, 10 years ago, um, it was hard to get, you know, organic food, and now it's, it's everywhere. It's a marketing tactic that they use, and they know that people want it, so they're going to market whatever uh, people will buy. So if we show enough demand for it, um, not only will it become more available, but it will help bring the price down and, and so on and so forth. And so we hope, uh, we hope, and, and that's my desire with GMO, is to, to get to that point where um, we know that that's what we're consuming. You know, the majority of packaged foods, um, they're going to have GMO in them unless they specifically say they don't. So we need to be very aware of that. And we're going to get into, you know, the health risks of that and why I, I'm so adamant about making sure that, that, that's, that this gets out there and uh, continuing on. Uh, just just notifying everyone, putting everyone on notice that this is this is what it is. This is what the studies have shown, and scientists have been attacked by their research. Um, so that brings us to this week's special report on GMO, and we're going to focus on corn. Um, so we're going to go on to that possibly in two parts, but um, that GMO special report will start right now. This is a foodoffensive.com special report. This week's report, GMO, corn. First of all, what is GMO? Well, GMO stands for Genetically Modified Organism, or it's also seen as GEO, Genetically Engineered Organism. And it's an organism whose genetic material has been altered using genetic engineering techniques. There are six main GM products or GM crops that we eat every day, and they are soy, corn, canola, cotton, sugar beets, and alfalfa. So why should we avoid GMOs? And why am I here at foodoffensive.com starting with this particular subject as a first series of special reports? Well, the American Academy of Environmental Medicine reported that several animal studies indicate serious health risks associated with GM food. And those include for infertility, immune problems, accelerated aging, faulty insulin regulation, and changes in major organs in the gastrointestinal system. Now, it is hard not to consume corn. Just take a look at this uh, clip from King Corn. It's a documentary. And this clip shows just an example of all the products that corn is in. Corn starch, corn gluten meal, hydrolyzed corn protein, corn syrup, corn starch, corn syrup solids, corn starch. hydrolyzed corn protein, high fructose corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup. Now this is the danger with GMO corn, and uh, that's why I wanted to start with with GM, GMOs and specifically corn as, as the first focus because it's in everything. Corn is a major staple of our diet, especially when it's used as a filler in so many processed foods. Not to mention the food we eat, i.e. cows, are, are fed or finished on corn. Now grass-fed beef is becoming more popular as a more natural, I would say not so tasty as, as corn alternative. And corn is fed to these cows at the end, and it gives it that, that nice flavor that, that you taste. But more than likely, that is genetically modified corn. Now, in an ebook published by naturalnews.com titled 25 Amazing Facts About Food, this was number 19 titled, Unless they're organic, nearly all corn products or byproducts on the U.S. market are genetically modified and may place your health at risk. More than 85% of the corn consumed in the U.S. is genetically engineered. Since farmers sell their corn to large distributors who mix the product together for processing, this essentially means that 100% of non-organic corn products on the U.S. market are genetically modified. So unless it says, quote, organic, you should expect to be eating a genetically modified ingredient. Now, GM corn grows its own pesticide within the corn kernels, so the insects will die if they eat it. Studies have shown that its effects on organ function and fertility 
and it may even cause the bacteria in your body to produce and release a pesticide in your own gut. But it doesn't stop with corn. Please look ahead for uh, upcoming reports on the other major genetically modified crops that we eat every day, in addition to some interesting combinations that have been experimented with. Now here are just some examples of some combinations that we'll maybe cover later. That's right, it is now possible for plants to be engineered with genes taken from bacteria, viruses, insects, animals, or even humans. Scientists have worked on some interesting combinations, and these are cross-species manipulation to say the least. One of them is spider genes that were inserted into goat DNA in hopes that the goat milk would contain spider web protein for use in bulletproof vests. This is not a joke, folks. This is actually spider goats. You can look it up. Uh, BBC and others have done reports on it. And basically, goat's milk produces an extra, uh, there's an extra protein in it, and they spin that and use it to make uh, silk. That's the same thing that spiders uh, use for their spider web. It's, it's pretty wild. Another one, jellyfish genes have uh, used to light up pig's noses in the dark. Now, those traits have also been passed on to their offspring, some of these uh, tests that they've done. And another one, Arctic fish genes gave tomatoes and strawberries tolerance to frost. And you can see that in this clip here from The Future of Our Food, the documentary. Genetic engineering is really a radical revolution in food production. It's really a cell invasion technology. You know, people have heard they're taking a flounder gene and putting it in tomato so the tomato can last in, in cold temperatures. But people ask, how does that flounder gene get in that tomato? How does it get in there? And what really happens is the only way you can do it is to invade the cell of the tomato and deposit the flounder gene. Well, what's good at invading cells? Bacteria and viruses. After now, are these wonderful advances in science for the betterment of mankind? or a path that leads to disease and disaster through genetic manipulation. Stay tuned for more. This has been a Food Offensive Special Report. And so hopefully you can, you can see already, you know, with, um, with, with last week's introduction to GMO and then this week's uh, next second installment uh, of the GMO series of special reports, um, you know the the reason why I'm I'm making it such a big deal about this and, and getting it out there and uh, doing this as our first series of special reports and uh, just the seriousness of it, especially something like corn that is in so much of our products. And, you know, you can there's documentaries that that talk about how the corn is in in there's just so many products and things we wouldn't even think of possibly. You know, things that. You know, we wouldn't just automatically say, that, "Oh, well, there's corn in that." Um, and so the problem is when that genetically modified uh, corn, you know, when it's being it's being changed genetically, then we're ingesting that, and it's such a big part of our diet, and and also it's being fed to cows, and um, and then we eat them. So it's it's that's that's why it's so important because it's just it's just saturated into our our food supply, and. Uh, here in, uh, in conclusion tonight, um, this has been a food, foodoffensive.com uh, broadcast. We're coming at you from the front lines of our food supply. Uh, you can catch us on uh, iTunes now. The podcast has been approved and it is up. Uh, we'll be adding uh, audio only and the video that you're watching now as well. Um, with the video, you get the you know ability to see the graphics and see the document shots and things like that, and, and for the special reports, see the video clips and various things like that. But but you can always uh, do the audio only for for when you're in the car, or when you when you can't be looking at your screen or or whatever the case may be. So that's going to be available as another um, uh, a medium for for transmitting this information. And of course, foodoffensive.com will be posting up articles from time to time. Um, kind of sending out tweets also about what the what the next week's um, 
video is going to be coming up and what we're working on getting out to you and just uh, pertinent news to what what's going on and I, I appreciate you for for tuning in and for listening and uh, I said in last week that I was trying to keep it to 10 or 15 minutes but uh, we can see that that hasn't happened uh, there's just so much to cover and uh, we'll try to we're trying different things I'm trying different you know I've had problems with lighting and problems with sound and problems with uh, the video and, and uh, video camera getting getting just the right sync with the audio and things like that so there's challenges but I, I know that if if I if I wait till I get it just right it's gonna be six months from now and we'll say well I really do want to start that and I, w I wouldn't have had started it yet and here we are already three to four videos in so that's why uh, I just wanted to get it going and hopefully I've drawn your attention hopefully you've become interested and hopefully you'll you'll continue to watch these and um, as we move on and as we continue on throughout the year covering different uh, different uh, topics from sugars to superfoods to uh, to to milk and the, the benefits of raw milk and uh, the various other forms of dairy and just uh, just a whole you know I have a whole list of things uh, enough to get one one per week at least and so uh, please stay tuned for more. This has been a foodoffensive.com uh, transmission uh, coming at you from the front lines of our food supply. Thanks for joining me.